Hey guys, today we are looking at the Plastic Soldier Company German Panther Ausf or Ausfahrungs A with Zimmerit. So basically this is a 172 scale uh, kit. In fact, you get two uh, kits in the box. As it says in the bottom right hand corner there, some assembly required. Uh, so basically, uh, these are 172, uh, denoted by the red tab on the top of the box as well. The black ones are the 15mm uh, ones, if you uh, come across those and you're looking for 172, make sure you get the uh, ones with a little red uh, tab on top there. Uh, artwork is quite decent, I don't know who's doing the artwork for Plastic Soldier uh, Company, but uh, looks very nice there. In fairness, you have two Panthers. Um, could be in Normandy or something like that, a little bit of camouflage, and you have your commander sticking out of the turret and so on. Behind him there, you have a, a 251 half-track coming up there, so it uh, could be, uh, you know, break out from Normandy or something like that, or Russian campaign or whatever. Anyway, uh, artwork is quite nice, as I say. I like uh, that old-style artwork on the boxes. Anyway, it's kind of reminiscent of the uh, the old days, a little nostalgia. Side of the box, usual warnings. Uh, don't keep the children under 12, etc., etc. Choking hazard and so on. Um, I'm pretty much over 12. Um, anyway, uh, side of the box, uh, again, fairly straightforward, as I always say. Nothing much going on there, as you can see. No further information. On the back, however, you do get a painting guide, uh, and it suggests the Vallejo colours uh, and a nice uh, kind of camouflage scheme there. If the camera picks that up, um, looks quite well. Kind of doing something similar myself with that. Not exactly the same, but uh, that's the uh, the general uh, idea that it gives you. Uh, as I said, contains uh, two Panthers um, with the Zimmerit uh, mine paste uh, and the Commander and a few bits of stowage and stuff as well. And that's basically it, that's the box, um, can't fault it, um, that's all you need, box, carry the bits and pieces, and off you go. Uh, so let's have a little look at the instructions before we look at the sprues, shall we? Um, so the instructions themselves are, because this is a kind of a rapid assembly or quick build tank uh, kit, um, fairly basic, uh, there you go, you can see there, number one, putting your machine gun, Back plate for the turret um, and the running gear. This is uh, sub assembly, as I call it. Um, now, the one thing I didn't like about this, even though I love those uh, kind of simplified track systems, is where the tracks join uh, here. I think it would have been a bit, a bit more clever, shall we say, if they had them uh, join behind the side skirts. Where would they be out of sight? Um, but that's only a small uh, criticism there. Um, and then you have the, uh, the turret, as you can see there, so you can put your commander in if you wish, or have the turret closed. And uh, that's basically that, and pop it together uh, for the, uh, the basically the full kit, as you can see. Um, very handy. All these pieces are uh, sculpted in, these little things like the, uh, the tools and so on and so forth. Uh, so quite uh, quite handy there, no finicky bits, and uh, you get the exhaust mounted at the back and so on. Um, that's basically what the sprue layout looks like there, and you can kind of do the uh, mid or later production one because it gives you two exhaust options, as you can see there. Uh, these are those down in the left-hand corner here. Um, so basically quite a little versatile little kit, uh, even though it's, uh, as I say, very, very straightforward um, and nicely detailed. So let's have a little look at the uh, sprue, shall we? Um, just get that there for you now. I'll just chuck those boxes gracelessly out of the way. Um, so basically, there is your, uh, one of your sprues. You can see there the detail is quite nice. I hope this is picking this up. Yeah, there we go. Um, so there's the, uh, the detail there. The tracks look quite nice. As I say, my only criticism is just the join point, but you know, a little bit of filler and that'll be fine. Um, but very, very nicely detailed. There's the uh, base of the hull, escape hatches and access points and various bits and pieces on it. Uh, side skirting there, the rear. Again, the zimmer is quite nice on that, nicely pronounced, very visible. Uh, clever enough here with the wheels where the, uh, the, the cogs, shall we say, the teeth um, uh, are uh, missing here on the side. That's uh, intentional, obviously, so that it slots into the tracks neatly. So you just have to uh, make sure you line those up correctly. Uh, a couple of fuel tanks, and there's your exhaust, as we say. The other side of that there, not much more going on there. And that, it's just the uh, internal parts, as you can see. Uh, 
Uh, so the second sprue, I'll just take this and put it out of the way for a moment, uh, is this lad. A um, lot more going on here. Uh, here you have your MG34 air defense weapon, uh, light machine gun, turret uh, lid, shall we say. <laughs> uh, there's the turret ring as well for the, uh, the mount for the, uh, the machine gun and the uh, little cupola as well. Um, that's your um, hull mounted MG34. That's your cleaning kit for your gun barrel, your 75 mil hatches, the uh, stowage boxes or something there, spare tracks, nicely detailed. You don't have to put on the spare tracks if you wish. You could you know, put on one or two and keep in the spares box for another kit. Uh, as you can see, their detail on those quite nice. Zimmer is nicely pronounced uh, and looks quite good. And uh, upper hull section engine deck there, yeah, looks good. Nice one. And uh, a nice uh, aperture there for the uh, the peg, the mounting peg, or whatever you want to call it, for the turret, um, which uh, just is a kind of a better idea, really, I think, than the small little tiny ones you see on some kits. Um, just makes it a bit more practical, a bit of, bit of thought went into that. Um, and there you have the uh, the uh, driver and the bow gunner, um, or hull gunner um, positions there. Uh, they can be left in the open or closed position, as you can see. Uh, here we have the front of the vehicle itself. Again, Zimmer is quite nice. I do hope this is picking this up because the detail is actually quite tasty. Uh, you even have the uh, the lower sections there of the uh, the mud guard, shall we say, um, which any pictures I've seen of them usually got torn off fairly quickly, uh, but still looks good. Uh, base of the turret, there's a turret there itself. There's your 75 millimeter gun, and the back of the turret with the uh, little. Um, hatch there which could be uh, as an access point and uh, handy for uh, loading and unloading um, those big long 75 millimeter shells so uh, that is that oh let's have a look at the crew here the crew yeah you get one of these guys here which is a driver you can see the headphones on him there if that picks that up and here you have the commander himself looking rather stern and panzer commandery so you can see a nice bit of detail there on that. Uh, look at the rear. Again, not a whole lot going on the rear of those, as you can see. But a little bit more detail on the uh, figures there. If that'll just pick that up, try to get a bit more light on there for you. Yeah. So uh, that is the. Uh, well, there's the MG34, of course, and you can see the, uh, the ventilation holes on the uh, the barrel itself, which is uh, quite nice. Oh, so that's that. So let's have a little look at the actual finished kit itself. Now, as I always say, I do not profess to be the greatest modeler or painter that uh, ever committed a video to YouTube. So that's my disclaimer. However, um, here we go. This is basically uh, the finished article. Uh, as you can see, the detail comes up quite well, even if you are a rather mediocre uh, painter like myself. Um, in fairness, the uh, little bits and pieces uh, molded onto the uh, the actual hull itself uh, make it really easy. It really speeds up the job, um, and it just was a joy to put together. To be fair, uh, this is painted in, uh, if I remember correctly, Humbro sixty four um, enamel paints uh, for the beige. Oh, sorry, sixty three for the beige, uh, one one three for the brown, and seventy five for the green. And the beige, of course, is used then again. Um, basically kind of yellow color there for the little dots, those p-dots, and that is really how the uh, figure or the model itself comes out. Uh, I gave it a little bit of a dry brushing with uh, Humbro 53, kind of a matte enamel, um, just for the kind of worn effect here and there, and I gave it a, a very slight little touch of some Citadel uh, Nuren oil, uh, just to get into the grooves of that Zimmerit. A uh, nice thing about the Zimmerit uh, and in this model in general is that it, the detail is nicely raised. So from that perspective, all those little bits and pieces come up quite nicely. Um, and you kind of get to see the, the detail from a distance, uh, which sometimes you don't get to do in uh, other kits. Um, and the Zimmerit is a very, very nice idea, I must say. Let's see if we can get in there on this guy. Light isn't great, unfortunately. So, yeah, I can just about see it. I have to do a little bit of piping on the top of his cap and uh, one or two little bits of 
finishing off. Uh, the kit um, comes with a few little bits of accessories, as you can see, the fuel tank, um, which I have here, the front there, and as I say, the uh, little extra tracks. I put them all on this particular one, uh, just for the sake of it. Uh, that little bit of personal stowage there is actually from the Plastic Soldier Company uh, 251 kit, as is this piece here, if I remember correctly. Um, and I just put them on just for a little bit of uh, a little bit extra. And uh, that's basically it. Uh, they don't come with decals. Uh, which is the only downside really um, to what comes in the box uh, but at the same time uh, these things are readily available online uh, and particularly if you're wargaming uh, you can buy a sheet of you know a particular panzer division uh, if you wanted to you could do the panzer layer division or whatever or 21st panzer whatever uh, you can get all those uh, online quite easily so from that perspective uh, the decals aren't really an issue because uh, if you're wargaming and most people I would imagine are using these particular kits for wargaming purposes all they make a nice static display as well um, now the only criticism I have really I suppose is that uh, despite the fact that it's 172 I find it a little large uh, to scale um, and I think some of the plastic soda company stuff does kind of suffer from that a little bit um now that's not a major complaint from myself um but of all the panthers i have this is the largest shall we say and just to prove that i will just drop in a few other ones here from other brands this is a Ravel one that's about the closest in size i have now, i'm not sure if that's picking up on camera but the plastic soda company one is actually fractionally larger um in proportions here is an armor fast one if i can just put that up here okay in the armor fast uh, much more lacking in detail as you can see there um now that's close enough it's kind of the next closest in size to the uh the plastic soldier company uh kit itself uh what else have i got uh here is just take out the rebel one for a minute put him here here is a matchbox. Now the matchbox, of course, if you are familiar with matchbox, is in 176. So from that perspective, you would expect it to be a little bit smaller, of course. Um, but not too bad, now in fairness, as I say. It doesn't bother me particularly. Um, but as I say, it, the, the Plastic Soldier one is the, uh, the largest of the bunch. Um, we'll just move him out of the way again for one other comparison. This is the uh, airfix kit which of all of the panthers i have it's the smallest um in fact <laughs> beside the uh, plastic soldier uh, company one it nearly looks the same size as the panzer four um and as you can see they're a little bit shorter uh, in length um, a little bit less in height and uh, so on but at the same time as i say it doesn't bother me overly um and as i say i'm putting together a rapid fire battalion of uh, panthers so uh, I'll have 12 or 13 Panthers and uh, an air defense unit and a few bits and pieces. And um, even at that, the chances of wargaming an entire battalion of tanks, small enough, but it's doable. I will be doing it. Uh, here is the Diagostini or Altea uh, diecast uh, Panther in 172. Again, fractionally smaller. Um, not sure if that's picking up on the camera, but uh, it is once you actually uh, uh, can see it. It's uh, the Plastic Soda Company one. Um, does seem to be wider, chunkier, and so on and so forth. Um, but that really is my only criticism. And as I say, I it doesn't bother me that much. It's just as I'm making the video, I said I'd point it out um, for you guys. And I'll just remove these lads here quite gingerly to my little table beside me here um so yeah that's basically uh that's basically it um as i say i quite like the plastic soldier company stuff um although this is only the second kit i've ever put together from them you can actually see there with the tracks that will join there i will be dropping a little bit of filler in there when i kind of do my final uh little bits of uh tidy up work um I quite like the plastic soda company stuff, but uh, this is actually only the second kit I've manufactured from that particular manufacturer um, because uh, the 251 um, is the uh, the only other one I've done um, in a 
C and D formats and um, one or two others. Um, but I found that uh, to be an excellent little kit, a uh, great little, uh, little kit to put together. So that is it, guys. That is my review on the Plastic Soldier Company uh, Panther uh, Type A with Zimmert. Um, good kits, a little bit large, as I say, but uh, if I was starting out and doing an entire battalion again, um, I might quite happily uh, populate it solely with this particular uh, brand. But as I say, just watch the size if you're matching in with other things and if that type of thing uh, bothers you, as I say, not a problem for me. So that basically is it, guys. Uh, if you'd like and subscribe and all that business, um, this video has gone on a little bit longer than intended. We're over the 15 minute mark. Uh, but if you'd like and subscribe, that'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, these are very simple little videos that I do here. Um, you know, there's no, <laughs> there's no glitz and glam. Um, <laughs> there's no image stabilization and so on and so forth. So uh, if you would like and subscribe, that'd be greatly appreciated. And I will be back with a, a few other bits and pieces uh, fairly shortly of an uh, absolute huge amount of uh, projects to get through uh, from the uh, the old stash in the attic. This is a more uh, recent addition that I treated to myself, myself to a couple of weeks back. Um, but I'll be getting back to the older, more classic stuff uh, in the next videos. So I'll leave it with that, guys. Take care. All the best. Bye for now.